Are you done fiddling around? Yeah, why? You're on. Hi, everyone. I am here with a Bible reading. Stop <laughs> making faces. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a Look great at the day. camera. <laughs> Did you even watch the video back yesterday? No. The sea tig? No. Did you? No, but I'm going to put it on TV later so I can see. See him up close. You're going to have to come in and look. So, I hope you guys are having a great day. Did you guys see Tig's big debut on the video That's yesterday? Not the big debut. Well, it has been for a long time. He ain't been on the video in a long time. And he looks healthy. Probably since the day we got him. Well, yeah, he, he don't think he's sick now because he's really chunky and he looks really good. Maybe he was just sleepy that day. He looks really good right now. Has he got water? I want to check his water thing. Or kick you. Well. Okay. Today we're going to be reading Mark chapter 6, verse 30 through 56. Yes, it's not water. Okay. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 10. And Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. What are you doing? Stop twerking, Sherm. Layla will catch you. Layla can't catch me. She's too slow. She'll catch you. Too slow. We'll catch you. Both of us will. No. Yeah, we will. No. Yep. Shit. <laughs> We're not slow. Shit. <laughs> but picking on us. Slow. <laughs> he's, point, he's pointing at you and pointing at me and slow. saying slow, Layla. Slow. <laughs> Go sit down. Sloth. Calling us a sloth now? Go sit down, sloth. Slow, sloth. Go sit down. All right, today in Mark, we'll be talking about Jesus feeds the 5,000. Jesus walks on water. Now, I don't know if it talks about it in here, in this book, but Jesus was not the only one that walked on water. I'll see if it mentions it in, in this section, but if it doesn't, I'll tell you. In Psalm 40, verses 1 through 10. So we got that. So let's get started here in Mark. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. He already knows what he's going to do. He's testing their faith again. How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Buy, you know, loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the grass, green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was five thousand. And that was not counting women and children that ate as well.
my dry mouth is horrible today. Now we're going to read. Yum, yum. That's disgusting. Breakfast. What is what is that? Spaghetti's. So sick. Sherm's coming in here to take his medicine. And he's got a cold can. He always just opens these cans and just eats them right out of the can. He's having cold spaghettios right out of the can. That makes me so sick. I gotta have my stuff hot, I'm sorry. Alright. Jesus walks on water. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. He always liked to pray, you know, alone. And he did it a lot. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake. He wasn't with them, okay? The disciples were in the boat, Jesus was not. And he was on alone on land, Jesus was. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost and cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. Now it ain't going to tell that part, so I'll tell it to you. It'll talk about it in another book. When Jesus was walking on the water, he was standing there on the water at the boat, and Peter said, you know, they was afraid it was a, he was a ghost. And Peter said, if it is really you, Lord, have me walk to you. Have me come to you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter got up and was walking on the water towards Jesus. And then, you know, he looked down. He lost his faith. He looked down. And he was walking on water. He got scared. And then he fell in. And he was drowning. And Jesus took his hand and, you know, saved him. And Jesus, you know, was like, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? He lost his faith, so he fell in. But Peter did walk on water. So, that is in another book of the Bible somewhere. So I wanted you to know that part. When they had crossed over, they landed at Generaset and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Wouldn't that be amazing? Just being able to touch Jesus' clothes. The edge is the very edge of the bottom of his garment. And you'd be cured of all your problems, all your diseases. Completely cured. I'd sure be happy. Yeah. You would, wouldn't you, sure? Yeah, I would. Who wouldn't be? Psalm 40, verses 1 through 10, for the director of music of David, a song. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us, none can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, 
they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in your scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not still seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Amen. So that was just part of Psalm one, one, or part of Psalm forty, of verses one through ten. Still got more of it. Okay, and ending today's Bible reading, Proverbs chapter ten, verses eleven and twelve. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all wrongs. So true. So very true. Let's read that part again. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. So true. So very true. Alright guys, let me go through the list on our of our prayer requests, and then we'll be done with the Bible reading. I'll give you the verses too. Please pray for my mom, Rhonda Karchner. Her, my mom and my Aunt Cindy were out here today visiting. Please pray for Sherm, Layla and her son Emil, Elizabeth Jeffries, Judy Thompson, Jimmy Myers, Cindy Welsh, Dora Harper, and Joyce Light. Okay, and our verses. Psalm 27.4 One thing I ask of the Lord this only do I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek Him in His temple. And Psalm 84.10, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Yes. All right, guys. So, remember, next week I'll be adding on a new verse, probably. So, get to studying those two verses so you, you know them. <clears throat> so, that was everything for our Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And, God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.